Hey, what's up guys? It's Jamie. I'm just doing a quick share. I got to tell you, I love the technology of a cell phone more so now than I did 20 years ago. I don't know if you guys remember 20 something years ago when Nextel came out. Nextel had that two-way walkie-talkie where it was like, hey, what are you doing, man? You know, and it was like you weren't cool unless you had that two-way, uh, you know, phone, like a walkie-talkie feature. It was the, it was the coolest thing. And, um, you know, it, I think texting existed back then, but not in the level it does now. But the capabilities and the function to be able to listen to your emails, uh, to check your bank account, to, to uh, get you know Google Maps or Waze or whatever you might use, it's really a, 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 it's a great tool um, other than just a communication, right? It's, it's far beyond that, which we all know. I don't have to get, get into that. That's probably why everyone has an Apple or an Android phone for the most part. But uh, what I wanted to share was, uh, I'm going to talk about options and something I just learned um, which is, is, might be have gone around for a little while or has resurfaced recently, but it's something I only recently learned as I learned more about options trading, which is one of the diversifications of ways I'm trying to invest and increase my net worth and my portfolio size uh, amongst all the chaos and insanity that's going on. Again, I never had anybody in my life to teach me money, to sit me down and say, you know, here's how you should manage your money, here's how important credit is to you, as an adult, why you should build it, establish it, how it works for you, how debt works for you. Here's, uh, you know, how real estate works. Uh, you know, having an account, you know, where you should, all that stuff, right? There's, there's a lot of things that I've, I'm continuing to learn, but I've learned more in these past few years, you know, in my my mid 40s, than I did my whole entire life. And it's sad, but you know, I'm not alone here. So when I share this stuff, it's just perspective, because most of the people in the real world, I mean, online here. There'll be a few people that are going to be like me, uh, that are men or women that are in their late 30s, 40s, or 50s, somewhere in that range where they're like, oh, I'm a electrician, you know, or I'm an executive guy, like, you know, working as a, um, you know, not an executive, like a CEO, but like somebody who is, um, you know, that might make good money. I know a lot of skilled laborers that make good money, right, but they're going to bust their ass uh, and work, take a lot of work. I have a, a mechanic friend of mine, he's a master tech, you know, in the auto industry that, you know, he makes six figures and he's the best at, at, at you know, and at what he does. And he has to take a lot of side work, you know, cause he's got three, you know, he has three children and his wife doesn't work. And, and you know, with, with the, the, the cost of living, he needs to take that side, side work to help, uh, you know, get ahead. So a lot of us live pay to paycheck to paycheck. A lot of us, uh, think that savings money is under your mattress or, um, you know, in a, in a savings account, which I don't believe now that that is the right, uh, is necessarily the right thing to do. Okay. For, for me, anyway, because it, it, I just look at where have I been to where I'm at. And if it was just like diet and exercise, uh, one of the many YouTube professors I watch, I like to call them YouTube professors, are somebody that, that uh, are more successful to, than me, not a guru, somebody that has uh, some credibility and if you look them up you can tell yep they are indeed successful they are worth you know uh, tens or hundreds of millions of dollars they've been around a while so if they have something to say like let's say something like Warren Buffett right so most people know who that is or Elon Musk so if somebody has uh, a positive message that they can say hey listen here's what I think you should listen or at least it's a good idea to listen and, and not because you should listen to me, but these are just some things I've learned that I've seen working, where I see that the practice, it's just like somebody said to me, if I wanted to lose weight, hey, maybe you shouldn't eat donuts, you know, every day for breakfast. That's not healthy. Maybe you shouldn't eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich uh, or a heavy meal before you go to bed at night because you're not burning the calories and you're storing the calories, that's why you're getting fatter. So one of the guys that I watch, his name is uh, one of the many guys I'll watch. I try to get little pieces because I just don't have, I, I don't have unlimited time. I, I try to spend an hour or two, you know, a day, whether it be in the morning when I'm laying down at night, where I, whenever I can spend some time where I can take some my, my undivided attention and really focus on what's being shared and, and try to watch it over and over again until I actually get it. That's, that's for me. Like some people will listen to something, they'll instantaneously It'll just snap, and once in a while that'll happen for me. Other times I'm like, I, I just gotta watch that again. What did he, he or she say? So uh, one of the, there's a young guy, his name's Adam, and his YouTube channel, I'll give him a shout out, is called In The Money. Young kid, I would guess he's in his mid 
20s, to, I'd say 24 to 27, 26, or something like that. But sharp kid, uh, doing well. Uh, he's been around a little while, has over 300,000 subscribers. And uh, I've learned some stuff from, from that young man. That young man. It's not like an old, old person. But I learned some stuff from the, the guy, and, uh, uh, and I'll give credit where credit's due. Now, some of the stuff that he shares, I don't get. It's like... I have to, I have to like go to other places. Like there's another guy that's called, uh, his, his name is uh, Invest with Henry, I believe it is. Uh, and he's uh, a big options trader. And uh, and again, that's another guy who I really like. I like his vibe, I like his energy, and, I, and some of the stuff he shares is awesome. Like I really get some good stuff. So there's a lot of really credible people that if you wanna learn something and any skill, uh, anything to do with stocks, options, and you know, precious metals, real estate, uh, cryptocurrencies I mean it's out there for you right we could I could talk for a long time just about that but uh, what I wanted to share here the the, the reason I'm leading into this and, and uh, uh, was the something called leaps now, I am not qualified to um, ask for anything you know I might put a link at some point here and there uh, to some a product or service that I use that works for me that I think is um, a good product or service that I would stand like say yeah I recommend that and it's worked for me as a recommendation now, I am not qualified to um, ask for anything you know I might put a link at some point here and there uh, to some a product or service that I use that works for me that I think is um, a good product or service that I would stand like say yeah I recommend that and it's worked for me as a recommendation um, or suggestion right um, but I have no courses to sell I like that I, I like when people are not trying to push something or have a an, uh, what do you call it? an agenda a hidden agenda you know like yo know, please sign up for my free webinar like I don't I don't really I get the hustle but I don't generally like that so I don't have anything like that maybe at some point in the future I'll feel really confident where I can offer something like that but I certainly don't today if I, somebody was hiring me that was buying an automobile, right? I would definitely be able to comfortably charge somebody something for my time. All right, so let's let's get to the uh, to the part about options. So leaps, leaps. Let's see if I get this right. Uh, oh my gosh, leverage, equity. E is for equity. A P is for anticipation. Um, security. You know that's what it means. I didn't come up with it. That's just what it's called. So long term, meaning I buy a contract uh, that is far out and deep in the money, and I will make sure I put something in here. So long, uh, if it's if you're buying a call, then you do not own the shares, or you or you might, but you're just basically saying I am I'm buying the right to own a hundred shares. One contract represents one hundred shares. So up to recently, I used to, if I did that, I would buy something a week or two weeks out on, on average. Once in a while, three to four weeks, and, uh, and, and then a few times, two or three months, right? But usually one to two weeks because I wanted to turn the money. Uh, and usually if I bought a one or two week out uh, call, I would uh, flip it pretty quickly. Whether I, want or, whether I was up or down, I didn't want to hold it very long. I didn't want it to expire worthless, which has happened to me several several times so if I was buying a long-term option contract a call let's say right now um, I'm not able to afford Tesla because Tesla is you know six hundred dollars um, like six hundred and change right now so hey if you own a hundred shares it's sixty thousand dollars so you'd have to be able to buy uh, you know if you were to buy a hundred shares it would cost you sixty thousand excuse me so if you were to buy um if you were going to buy 100 shares of tesla it would cost you you know sixty thousand dollars and uh you might not want to do that because either that might be all the money you have or you want to, you're leveraging yourself which isn't a good idea in most cases um or it's the percentage of your portfolio or, or investment uh, it's too high of a percentage of that portfolio. So if you have a hundred grand and you're going to risk sixty thousand, you know, um, to buy a hundred shares, it, it may not be a good idea. 
So if, uh, if I was buying Tesla and I could buy 100 shares at a discount for a far out option because I believe that, that Tesla will eventually you know, go beyond 600, you know, maybe go to 800 to 1,000 over the coming years. So if I could buy an option, uh, uh, if I could buy a option call, all right, that's important, buy, meaning like I don't buy the shares, I buy the contract and it costs me a premium to buy the, the contract, then it's gonna cost me X amount of dollars, all right? And if it costs um, a, a third of that, or, or let's say a third of that, say it cost me, instead of $60,000, it cost me $20,000. Or maybe a fourth of that, instead of spending $60,000, I spend uh, $15,000. So to me, I would much rather spend $15,000 to have 100 shares on a contract um, than spending the 60,000. Now my contract, which back to the leaps, long-term equity, anticipation securities meaning i'm buying that contract let's say in i'm just going off the top of my head say january of 2023 so i have lots of time for it to go up and down where i think okay ultimately i'm going to buy it deep in the money meaning i'm going to buy it if it's at 600 right now let's say i buy it for you know 500 so like 236 dollars a contract so it's 23,000. Uh, Six hundred dollars for a contract, so that's still less. So that's probably closer to the third. I said it's closer to uh, instead of spending uh, sixty thousand dollars. So I so that stock would have to go up to seven hundred and thirty-six dollars over the course of to January two thousand twenty-three for me to break even for what it would cost me to buy the contract if I was to hold it to the full term. So at the end of the expiration date of January or January two thousand twenty-three. If it, it was, if I held it that long with all the decay of, you know, the value of the premium, um, I'd have to be at 736 or above, you know, to break even to what it costs me to buy the contract today. But if within six months it spikes and, you know, at a $500 strike price and something that cost me 23000 that $236 contract might actually be worth 300 bucks. Right or, or a two fifty or two seventy five or who knows right Cause whatever it's worth, and uh, if that if the price of the stock went up, then so does the premium, so does the the uh, strike price, and I could sell that beforehand and get a lot of that premium back because I'm kind of selling to somebody else, and I would, it's basically like owning the shares, so I'm risking twenty three thousand dollars, which is the most I could lose worst case scenario, but it's also over almost you know a year and a half, right. So over a year and a half. I like that. I like those odds. Now, again, it's $23,000. So if you're not able to do that, you have to do it with something that's smaller um, and and whatever that stock might be. And you want to pick a good one upon your own investigation and your, your research and due diligence, all that stuff. You're like, so like uh, I've been looking at Peloton, not Peloton, Pelletier, Pelletier, right? P P L T. PLTR, Pelletier Technologies, which is, uh, you know, it's got some contract. I mean, I'm, I'm not here to, to go into all that kind of stuff, right? The fundamentals and the, about the company, but I'm just giving an example. Now, that stock is only in the 20s, so it's much cheaper to buy that far out than it is, say, Tesla or Google or Amazon or Apple. You know, I mean, Apple's 140, 50 bucks a share right, right now. So even that's going to be uh, more affordable than, say, Tesla. Okay. So that is how leaps work. Now I'm going to I'm going to do one, and um, and you know track it so I can I can somehow in the title uh, I can actually say here's an implementation, here's an execution of one to to kind of watch, and then I can post it and say here's the here's what I did, and everyone could check it out and whoever's interested can say all right here's what jamie did and whether i lose it all or you know make a hundred bucks or ten thousand bucks whatever it is I'm like here's what it costs here's the date here's the expiration date here's the premium that costs here's uh you know what i lost or made and and that, i think that's how i've learned i've like like show me the details don't just tell me the story i need to see the specific specific details so i can better understand and apply it in my own method
right? And, 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 and execute it my own way. So I think it's replicating and doing that over and over again that helps you kind of build your portfolio. And obviously there's a lot of safe investments that you can do. Again, you could stick the money in your pillow, which the risk there is deflation or like if the money, if the dollar is worth less, then it doesn't matter how much you save, you can save a million dollars. If it goes down 20% a year, then you know it's not doing you any good. If you're putting your money in a bank account, then the, the percentage that you get in a savings account or money market account is very minimal. And if you put your money into uh, you know freedom fund with fidelity, Anyway, whatever you decide to put your money into, there's going to be different returns on your money. Obviously, you want to maximize your, your returns and, uh, and compound them, right? Like So if you put it in the S&P, if you put it into some type of index fund or whatever those things are, uh, which may be a topic on another video, there's going to be average returns and percentages that you're going to get back for that amount of money you put in it. For me, time is, is important because if you're 45 versus 25, you know, by the time 20 years goes by or 10 years goes by and, and, you know, a lot of things can happen. You know, your health, you, know, you get older, your, your mobility, uh, the, the world changes. There's a lot of things that happen in a decade or two from when the time when you're 20 or 30 versus when you're 40 or 50, you know, because you're transitioning to a different stage in your life. So there's more of an urgency where you kind of have to say, like, I, I need this to, to, to I need this to work, but I got to be safe. And I can understand now when somebody says, oh, you know, I, I, I don't want to risk my nest egg um, when it could all fall apart. And I can understand that, especially if somebody is in their late 60s or late 70s, right? Or, or even they're in their 50s, like some point in their 50s, because it takes a long time or they, they might have acquired a good bit of money and lost it all, right? Or, or the, the fear is, what if I lose it all? And then they have no way to make it back or it's gonna be really hard for them to make it back. And so the, there's a lot of things where, again, that I'm learning about money and investments and diversification and all these things I think are so important that I wish I would have acquired 10, 20 years ago. So uh, anyway, that's my, my input on leaps. Um, I'll catch you next time. See ya.